Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome to a new video. My name is Prince Mason. Today, I'm going to be showing you my workflow in Capture One, which actually starts from customizing Capture One all the way to using layers. Then at the end, I'll show you recipes, which is just a fancy name for your export settings in Capture One. And today's video is proudly sponsored by Capture One. So I'm partnering with Capture One and they are giving the first 100 people uh, 20% off. So definitely check that out. I'll put a link in the description below. So check that out. Be one of the first 100 people, get 20% off. Capture One is amazing. I've been using it for the longest time. So it's always good when you are sponsored by people or software that you actually use every day. So yeah, link is in the description below. Check it out. Now the first thing I want to show you in Capture One is how to customize your Capture One. So the amazing thing about Capture One is, let's say you're coming from Lightroom, you can actually change the interface of Capture One to actually look like Lightroom or you can just use the default workspace which i actually use and i really love now even if you are using default workspace what you can do in capture one is just move things around to match what you want or take out some certain things that you don't like so what we're going to do right now is dive into capture one and i'll show you exactly how to make that happen so customizing your workspace in Capture One is really, really easy and I absolutely love it to be very honest. So I'm used to the default workspace in Capture One and um, I feel like it's very intuitive. You know, you have um, all your um, images on the right here and right here on the left, you know, you can adjust all your settings and then you have things up here for your toolbar. So, you know, it's very like intuitive to me and um, absolutely love it. But for some people, let's say you are coming from another software, you know, like IE Lightroom. Um, one thing you can do is just go to like your windows, go to workspace and you can try the migration. And once, you know, I do this, you can see um, it gives you something that you are very comfortable with and something that you, you know, you are used to and something that you really understand. But let's say you are already used to like the default workspace, but there's some things that you don't use, you know, there are some settings that um, or some toolbars, let me put it that way. There are some toolbars that you don't use. It's very easy to adjust it right now in Capture One. Now, let's say, for example, you do not tether a lot. Like, I don't tether a lot, but I'm trying to get, you know, into tethering right now. But let's just say, for example, you do not tether a lot, right? What you can do is you can easily remove this tool tab, you know, like remove. And right now you have your library, you have your styles, you have your shape, you have your adjust and refine. Okay, let's say we don't use shape either. So what I'm going to do is remove the shape tab, right? So I'm going to remove that. And you can see it just makes this whole thing very simple. So you have your adjust, you have your refine, which is like your sharpening and you have your styles. Let's say you use capture one styles, you have that here and you have your library. But say for example, you know, you want your export settings to be close. You know, you want your export settings to be around here. So what you can do is click on these three dots here and add toolbar and export as you can see we have our export recipes here so export recipes are basically like your export settings and we're going to get to that in this video but i just want to show you how easy it is to actually customize your capture one and like i said if for some reason you know you're coming from another software it's very easy for you to have capture one mirrored the way you know that other software looks and and that that's just lightroom right okay great so one thing again i want to show you is up here right you have your toolbar you have different things in capture one right one thing i absolutely love using is my focus mask right but by default sometimes it's not there so the way to actually work on this is just right click on your toolbar and go to customize toolbar and this is really really easy too okay um let's say there is exposure warning and we do not use it what we can do is we can just take that out and see our exposure warning is gone we don't have anything up here again but if for some reason we you know use our exposure warning a lot and want to keep it up there all we have to do is just come here click our exposure one in and we have it there and you can also adjust all these toolbars you know you can move these things around depending on where you want to put them it just depends on what you want to do you can go crazy or you can decide that okay not i'm just going to leave it this way okay so um we have our import and our export here um if you want to move things around we can easily move things around and capture one and you know it, it just it just depends on what you want okay let's say i print a lot i can put my print toolbar here and if i click done you can see everything is here very simple intuitive and easy to use so if you are probably have been scared of getting to capture one because you feel like oh you know what this is going to be hard to use and i don't understand a lot of things in capture one you can move things around to actually match exactly what you want to do and if you are you know a photographer that tethers a lot you can just add your tether tool and it's right here and see you have everything where it's meant to be so very simple easy to use and capture one is extremely customizable 
So now that you've learned how to customize your Capture One, the next thing you want to learn how to do is use layers. Now, layers is just another level above any other thing that um, Capture One has. Trust me, I absolutely love it. Now, you know that layers are typically what you use in Photoshop when you are retouching your image or maybe let's say you are designing and all that. Now, the beautiful thing about Capture One is it's giving you the, um, I would say the simplicity of using layers and masking to actually work on complex raw files. So it's just amazing. Amazing. Let's get into Capture One and I'll show you different things you can do with layers and um, how you can take your retouching or your photo editing um, game to a whole new level using layers and Capture One. Now, I absolutely love using layers and Capture One and there are so many ways to use layers, but I'm just going to show you a few ways that I use layers and Capture One. The first thing I want to show you is just basic adjustments. So with Capture One, you have your background layer and this is where if you make any adjustment, let's say, for example, you know, I'm messing around with my Luma Curve. This is where everything happens right here on our background layer right so now let's just remove that now let's say i want to make fine adjustments to different parts of my image right what i can do is create a new layer and let's say for this particular one what i'm just trying to do is just work on my subject i just want like her face to stand out let's say her face is not well lit right and i can rename this to face right and what i can do with this layer is just uh, let me say increase my shadows now by creating a layer like this just hitting this plus button What it does is that it creates a layer that is not an adjustment layer that is not filled, you know um, you, you don't have anything there and what you're going to do right now is painting You know where you want whatever adjustment that you've made to appear in your image So what I'm going to do right now is pick this brush here Now once you pick your brush you have your brush settings at the side So you can adjust your opacity your flow your size and the hardness of your brush You can also use pen pressure airbrush whatever it is you know just so many options to um, adjust your brush to match exactly what you need it to do right so what i'm going to do right now is just paint over her face right and what i did like i said was just increase my shadows and this is one way that i use layers a lot so if you look at my before look at that's it then let's look at my after you can see her face is brighter now before you can see it's dim after her face is brighter and that way her face stands out more than you know every other part of this particular image now i can see that it's a bit too much and this is where i also love using layers in capture one right all i have to do is just reduce my opacity right here up here and what that does is that if i take it all the way to zero you can see we don't have her face you know looking that bright anymore and i can just increase them or increase this to a particular place that i like maybe halfway maybe somewhere around 39 and this works perfectly for me so this is one way that i use um layers in capture one to adjust my images especially as a beauty and portrait photographer i'm going to show you guys again now that image look at this image here look at where her face is you know i can easily just come to my shadows and increase my shadows but what that's going to do is that it's going to affect the whole image right but i don't want anything to affect the whole image i love how contrasted the image is so what i'm going to do is just create a new layer right here um, i'm just not going to name that you know uh, for the sake of i'm um, not wasting too much time increase my shadows and what i'm going to do is just pick my brush come here paint over her face like that and as you can see her face is brighter now so let's see how before and let's see after see beautiful it's just a way to make your images stand out in capture one um and, and and you can do this to different parts of your images it doesn't have to be the face it can be the body it can be the background different parts it's, it's almost like you can even use this to dodge and burn your images right okay great now let's talk about another way that you can actually use your layers in capture one right so what i'm going to do is delete this layer right now now there's this thing called your luma range right so right now what i'm going to do is click on this button right next to the plus button and create a new field layer right now that i've created a new field layer any adjustment remember if you just click on the button the plus button is going to create an um a layer that is empty and whatever adjustments you do there you have to paint it in with a brush yourself right so now that i've created a new field layer anything i do let's say for example i am increasing you know my um i'll say my mid-tones right here 
you can see automatically it's working on that layer whatever i do automatically happens to that layer right okay now let's say i do not want this to affect the highlights and i just want it to be um to affect the shadows and not the highlight right this new this this simple adjustment that i made what i'm going to do is click on my luma range and once i click on my luma range this luma range box is going to come up and what i'm going to do is just take it away from my highlights and i can just blend it in just a little bit but i'm just going to take it away from my highlights and just blend it in just a little bit now let me show you the mask so when i display the mask you can see it's not um if i take this all the way you can see it's not affecting my highlights but you don't want it to look like this because if it does look like that look it just looks really wonky you don't want it to look like that so what you're going to do is just blend it in gradually right and that adjustment that we've done is not affecting our highlights but it's affecting every other thing around our highlights right so if i just click zero so it's affecting like our shadows and, and all that so if i go to our before you can see after everything pops but our highlights are not looking brighter and that's one way you can use luma range right now this is just an extreme case so what i'm going to do right now is reduce my opacity and um, let's see the before uh let's see how before before after you can see how i've used that to like brighten the image but at the same time if i check my exposure warning right here you can see that my highlights are not peaking so that's on that way you can use your um, um your layers in conjunction with your luma range right okay great let's look at the third way that you can use your layer so if for some reason you already have an image that you are trying to add um, a capture one style to you know um, and right now we're going to use one of these styles that come in, um, come with capture one what you're going to do is create a new field layer so we're going to create a new field layer and now that i've created a new field layer the next thing you want to do is click on this right and apply adjustments from built-in style now if you come up here and you come to your adjustments and you use your styles it does not work it would apply to the background layer but if you want to apply to um a layer you know where you can reduce the opacity that's why i absolutely love using capture one styles this way um what you're going to do is come down to just meant let's just pick one of the built-in styles let's say um fashion for example right we love how it looks we're just going to click fashion what we can do right now is reduce the opacity of this right just amazing so if you have capture one styles and use capture one styles a lot you can easily use this to reduce the opacity of your styles let's say for some reason it's too strong because you know not every style even if you love it would actually match the the, the aesthetic that you're going for sometimes it's just a little bit too much so you know this way you can reduce your opacity and it works great so let's look at the last way that you can use capture one styles that i'm going to tell you about today and that is creating mask from i'll say let's say your skin tone um your, your color editor right here and we'll come to our skin tone tabs let's say we're trying to work on our skin tones and what the whole skin tones to blend in right so what you're going to do is click right here on this um, color picker tool and we are going to pick our skin tone so what capture one is doing right now is telling me that look these all this from here all the way to here these are the colors that i'm selecting so if i click view color range every other thing that is um that's not colored so anything that is black and white you know um those are the colors that capture one is not picking up right but what i can do is that i can narrow this down you know i can narrow this down and say okay you know don't pick a lot of these things just pick these ones right here so i'm basically that's just like a skin tone don't pick these other colors so that's what i'm doing now that i've done this what i can what i'm going to do right now is just click on these three buttons here right here click on them and tell capture one that create a mask layer from this selection so from this selection i've made what i'm going to do is create a mask selection so what this is doing is um as you can see here capture one has created a selection of my image right here and anything i do so let's say i come here and i increase the opacity what it's going to do as you can see uh, i say increase the opacity i just pull in my whites i mean um what this is going to do is just work on the affected areas that you know i mean this is just too much but just to show you where capture one is working on is working on our masked 
areas that's what that's what capture one is working on right and um you can also see this through the luma range so if i pull up the luma range and i say display mask you can see everything here that these are the parts that are selected obviously this is not going to use it but i'm just showing you guys another way that you can easily use capture one to create mask but yeah just want to show you guys how um with capture one you can create different layers and you can build on them too you know it's not just by creating you know one layer you can you know create like a new um field layer and now what i'm just going to do right here is just probably work on my saturation reduce my saturation and at any point that i you know i want to see what's happening i can always just come here and go through my layers or i can rename my layers and say this is saturation something like that and um this is our subject space okay great so simple easy this is just um, a very simple and easy way to use capture one layers and i absolutely love it and i love this option that capture one gives me the third thing we're going to talk about today in capture one or the third thing i'm going to show you guys today is recipes recipes like i said is just a fancy name for your export settings and the way capture one deals with that is just beautiful look with your recipes you can export different settings to different subfolders inside your export folder it's just amazing the way capture one does that and if i try to explain it to you like this you probably not get it so let's just dive into capture one and i'll show you exactly how recipes or your export settings work in capture one now we're not going to go in in depth into like exporting and all the millions of things you can do with like the export recipes we're just going to keep it simple and i'll show you how easy it is to use and i'll also show you how i use it um so you can try it out too. now we export recipes what capture one is doing is giving you different options that you can export with so if you look right here on your left you have your jpegs you have your full size um highest quality jpegs you have instagram you know capture one has already created all these options for you but the amazing thing is you can always just click um you can just you know like change your settings down here then you can click right here to add a new recipe and name your new recipe so i could just name this princess export okay great uh didn't spell this one wrong this time <laughs> so i can just name this princess export right and every time i come down here you can see this is this it's tiff it's uncompressed and i can always just change the settings to whatever i want jpeg you know um adobe rgb and all that right and if i don't need this i can always just delete it and it's gone and we already have everything that we have here now like i said you can just set everything the way you want or you can use capture one's presets that are really good and they work great so um the the, the thing i want to show you right now is my favorite part of export recipes is the fact that i can export two different types of files at the same time or sizes of files at the same time right i can export for print um i can export for the web or uh, not two different different types let me just put it that way or file sizes and i can have them saved in different folders you get me have them saved in different folders so let's say for example i want to export this particular image right here on my screen and i want to export this image too right so what i'm going to do is this that is for web use i'm just going to name like it's going to go into the default um sessions um, output folder right but what i'm going to do is i'm just going to name this my website right so what it's going to do is it's going to create a subfolder for me called website right and let me say you know i have my um, full size highest quality jpeg right i'm going to just click on this and i'm going to name this print right now i'm going to go down click on instagram and i'm going to name this ig so just instagram right so now that i've done all this i'm going to export this is going to process take a minute to export all the files after exporting these files let's go to our library and let's go to our output folder and we're just going to show in library oh uh, no <laughs> i mean if you show in library if i scroll down here you can see we have our ig we have our print we have our website but let's show this in finder not just in library okay great so now that we are in finder let's just um change this to icons now that we're in finder you can see we have our ig once i come into ig you can see we have these files and these files are small files 1.7 mb so these are for instagram and if you come to your website we have i'll probably say slightly bigger files you check them out these are 2.7 mb and for our print we have this and we have both files inside there and these are going to be about what 
17 MB. So you don't have to export things one after the other right now with um, Capture One. And it just makes it easy for you. The fact that it just separates all the files for you, puts them in different folders. It just makes it really organized and really easy for you. This is a feature that I promise you I have been using a lot of this. I have been using a lot of my export recipes. Right now, even with Retouching Guru, which is my retouching company, it's just easy for me to export images out, put them in different folders and send those folders to the clients. And those clients can, you know, just go through those folders and pick whatever they want to use let's say for Instagram or for their website or for print and everything is just organized from my table all the way till it gets to there so yes export recipes I must if you haven't tried this out definitely try it out I absolutely love this feature so now that we are done learning how to customize your capture one and just make it your own make your workspace your own or probably use the default or the workspace that looks like Lightroom and you've also learned how to use layers and capture one which is just beautiful like I said it gives you the simplicity of working with layers um, on complex raw files and also you've learned how to export your images to different subfolders within your export folders and you know at the end of the day you don't actually have to you know export your images two or three times if you're exporting for print um um, Instagram and your website, you know, or social media and your website, you don't have to start exporting your images with three different settings. You can just click on the ones you want and export them. You know, now that you've learned how to do all this, if you're interested in using Capture One, please use the link in the description below. Like I said, you get 20% off um, for the first 100 people. So yeah, definitely check it out. Uh, big shout out to Capture One for coming through and sponsoring today's video. I absolutely love Capture One. I use it every day. And if you guys want to learn more about Capture One, I have a video that I did recently on how to work efficiently capture one and i also have a couple other videos that i've done about how you can use capture one to take your research into a whole new level so definitely check it out links are going to be in the description below and i'll see you guys in the next video thank you so much peace out guys